Hello out there in YouTube land. I'm going to do a little review uh, of a new pistol I just picked up. Uh, those of you that are familiar with them, this is a Cimarron box. So we've got some kind of neat old West revolver in here. And this one happens to be a, an 1872 open top. Alright, let's uh, go ahead and open it up, take a look at it. Got our normal assortment of certificates and paraphernalia and the always ever present I'm your Huckleberry bumper sticker. Those are always awesome. And <clears throat> nicely wrapped in plastic is a nice brand spanking new Colt U Verity copy of the Colt 1871 72 open top revolver. Now, while I'm getting rid of these boxes, give a little background on these revolvers. They were marketed by Colt in 1871-72 after their rolling white patents ran out and they were designed by Richards and Mason but what made them unique was they were specifically a metallic cartridge pistol. They were not a conversion. They were produced at the Colt factory uh, to specifically fire metallic cartridges. Um, the trouble with they were good revolver and today quite collectible but problem was it was too little too late. Um, it was a year before, a year or two before the 1873 single action army came out which was turned out to be one of the most popular rugged and best Colt revolvers, bottom line revolvers of all time. Uh, so we'll talk about this a little bit. 1871-72, uh, uh, we were already in the metallic cartridge age, well into it. Um, we had the uh, Henry rifle, which of uh, Civil War fame, and a lot of those on the frontier. Uh, Winchester's first Winchester rifle, the 1866 Yellow Boy. Both of those chambered in 44 Henry rimfire. So when uh, Richards and Mason and Colt designed and built and marketed these pistols, they were originally chambered in 44 rimfire because there was an abundance of ammunition readily available in the United States, especially on the frontier, and they already had two well-made, very popular rifles, the Henry and the Winchester 1866, both chambered in 44 Henry rimfire. So that was the thinking and the logic behind chambering these original uh, Colt open tops in 44 Henry rimfire. Uh, they only produced about 7,000 of these. Uh, this particular model, made by Uberti and marketed by Cimarron, has the naval grip, navy grips on it. And these were of uh, the early models. They used the navy grips. Now, the profile of this grip probably looks pretty familiar to those of you that are Colt Single Action Army fans because this is the profile of the grip. The navy style grip is the profile of the Single Action Army grip. Very comfortable, very well balanced not quite as long and narrow and a little not quite as hard to hang on to as the Army grip. Um, personally, I like the, the, the profile of Navy grip. It's just easier to, to hold on to and easier to shoot. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Cimarron's uh, copy of this 1872 open top. Beautiful, beautiful gun, as you can see. Very well crafted, very well put together. Wood to metal fit is excellent. Love the finish on the grips. It's a hand rub finish. It doesn't look like that older varnishy finish that you've seen on some earlier models. Nice pieces of walnut on there. Um, action is very smooth. It has half cock just like on the uh, percussion guns of, that look something like this, but you have a loading gate. All right, and load six cartridges. This particular uh, reproduction.
production is chambered in 38 special. I really like that round in a pistol, uh, especially a, a round like a uh, pistol like this. Um, you can load it with cowboy ammo or light 38 special loads to be completely safe and shoot very accurately and get a lot of use out of these, these guns. Um, I'm a big open top fan. Uh, love the conversion revolvers, love the open top revolvers. Uh, I have several black powder open top revolvers of several models and, and uh, variations and just really enjoy these weapons of that period on, in our American history. Um, like I said, this is a very smooth, smooth action. Uh, doesn't feel rough at all. Cylinder turns very freely. Got the half cock all the way back to uh, full cock. This is a, a stationary firing pin on the hammer, unlike the Richards Mason conversion that has a floating firing pin uh, in the frame. Uh, this is more reminiscent of Colt single action, uh, things to come, where it didn't have to have a recoil shield because, again, like I said, these pistols were specifically designed to shoot metallic cartridges, unlike conversion models that started out life as a percussion gun and were either retooled by a gunsmith, sent back to Colt to be retooled, or actually tooled out of spare parts uh, from Colt's factory and marketed as conversion firearms with the Richard Mason's conversion. All right, uh, trigger let off on this thing is sweet and it's crisp. Very, uh, I would say three pounds, maybe four. Uh, just very, very light, very crisp, very responsive. Can't wait to shoot this thing. Uh, if it shoots anything like any of my other Cimarron Uberity pistols, it's going to be a very nice, very accurate shooting firearm. Um, and again, a uh, nice piece of history here uh, that you can actually fire. Uh, originally, with the Cimarron or the Colt open top, there was only about 7,000 of those made, and they, they ceased production in 1872 to make way for the Colt single action army. However, Colt continued to produce conversion firearms from pocket Navy models and pocket police models and Navy and Army models from spare parts uh, for another 10 years, clear up until the 1880 or so. They were still selling and putting together cartridge conversion revolvers out of spare parts. So very unique piece of, of replica of a very unique piece of firearms history. Uh, 1872, 71, 72 open top, minus chambered and 38 special, made by Uberti of Italy, marketed by Cimarron Firearms. Again, beautiful weapon, very classic design, very well manufactured, well made. Can't wait to shoot it. Hopefully I'll get a video out to everybody uh, once I get this thing out on the range. Thanks a lot. Have a wonderful evening. Keep your powder dry.